talking tea. Here's a story time. My pants are unzipped. I've been waiting to make this video because Katherine Joswicki had a warrant out for her arrest, but she doesn't anymore. One year and one month ago, Katie Joswicki and I went on a road trip. We went to the Grand Canyon. We went down through Colorado to Arizona and then back up on Route 66. Now, to go on Route 66, you have to go, hello, you have to go through Texas and just the top of it, which is fine, not a big deal. We had a great time. We stopped in Colorado. We went up some mountains. It was great. We got to the Grand Canyon, also great. We're making our way back home. At this point, we are tired. We're so tired. We just want to get home. We had to stop in Amarillo for the night and stay in an Airbnb, and then we were gonna head up the next day. We left Amarillo the next morning as early as possible. It was light out. We stopped at um, a site where they have like all the cars. I don't know, what is it called? Like car junkyard or something like that. All the spray painted cars. We stopped there and then we were gonna make our way home. Plot twist, we never ended up making it home. We had to stop in St. Louis because we were exhausted. We spray painted on these cars and then we get in our car, which is Katie's Prius, and start driving. Now in Texas, they have a law that you can't drive on the left-hand side of the road unless you are passing someone. In Wisconsin, the law is, it's just like, if you're going slower, keep right. It's common courtesy, but it's not an enforced law where you cannot drive on the left side of the road. You cannot drive on the left side of the road unless you're passing someone. Now at this point, Katie is driving, there's a bunch of semis in front of us. And we're like, well, we wanna pass these semis. Now, little did we know that in Texas, they are also very strict about their speed limits. So we're passing these semis and we're going probably like five to eight over, not bad. I feel like in Wisconsin, you can go five to eight over or anything under 10. You can go at least 10 over, no, at most 10 over and you won't get pulled over, maybe a warning if anything, but really nothing will happen. Katie is going five to eight over to pass these semis. We're following the laws, everything's fine. And then we're in the left lane, Katie sees flashing lights reflected on the semi in front of us. So she pulls over as quickly as possible, even though there's still like a couple semis here, but she, you know, safely pulls over. The cop comes to the window. We're in the middle of nowhere, literally nowhere. And he says, well, I've been following you for a while. Did you know that? And he said, if we knew that, if we knew you were following us, we would have pulled over, basically. We didn't say that, but we were all thinking it. So, at this point, he's like, and I was just pulling you over for speeding, but, you know, since that was a dangerous pull, you pulled over so dangerously, I'm going to have to give you a ticket for that. He comes to the car and says that we were speeding and driving the left lane, which five to eight over, which normally wouldn't be a problem. In Texas, it is. Um, driving the left lane, we were passing people, so <laughs> it should have been fine. Clearly it wasn't in Wisconsin, wouldn't have been an issue. But he comes to the window and says, I was gonna pull you over for these things and just give you a warning, but you pulled over really dangerously in front of those semis, so I'm gonna have to give you a ticket. So he goes back to the cop car, whatever, um, he writes up his little ticket, whatever. He comes back to the window and he says, so I don't usually give out these tickets. It was called cutting in after passing, I believe. Yes. We're almost to the good part. <gasps> he, I hate you. Did I ruin it? No. So he says, I have to give you a ticket for cutting in after passing. Gives her a ticket for cutting after passing. But he says, I don't write these very often. So he hands us a piece of paper that has the judge's name circled on it, who she has to call so she can pay her $275 ticket for cutting in after passing, which she wouldn't have done unless he pulled her over 
In which case, she was trying to get over as quickly as possible because when you're getting pulled over, you panic a little bit. He didn't even know how much the ticket costs. He said you can call them and figure out how much the ticket will cost. Catherine's mother and I tell her, call them immediately. Guess what Catherine doesn't do? Call them immediately. So about a month later, she gets her coworker to call and they gave her the wrong phone number of the judge in Gray County, Texas to call. Somehow got the right phone number. When they called this place, they tell them that they only have paper records. They don't have anything computerized in Gray County, Texas, the middle of yeah. nowhere. So they couldn't even fax it to her. So Catherine then does nothing about a month later, we get a letter in the mail, backtrack. We get a letter in the mail, it doesn't get opened for a week and a half. I open the letter and it says, Katie must show up for her court date in Gray County, Texas the next day or she will get her license taken away or warrant out for her arrest. Guess who doesn't go to Texas the next day? Also in this letter was a form where she could have just checked a box and sent in a check for $270 and paid her ticket. Guess what Katie didn't do? Check the box and get pay a hundred or two hundred seventy five dollars to pay your ticket. So at this point, we're like, well, Katie, either your license is gone in Texas or you have a warrant out for your arrest. About a month later, we get another letter that says Katie has a warrant out for her arrest. <laughs> I don't even know what to say. <laughs> Every month from here on out, we get at least a letter or a phone call every month telling Katie that she has a warrant out for arrest or is in big, big trouble in Tejas. We went on our trip March 14th-ish. It was our spring break trip. A week ago, which is now, would have been like April 22nd, let's say, of 2019, a year and a month later, her mother gets a letter in the mail at a completely different address, which they didn't know about unless they really stalked her down to find this and it says that Katie officially has a warrant out for her arrest and it needs to be paid. End of story, her mother finally pays the ticket and I can finally make this video because it won't send her to jail in Texas. What we learned through this ordeal is one, don't pull in front of semis when you're getting pulled over, and two, don't drive on the left lane in Texas, and three, Texas is the worst state in the entire continental US. Number four, pay your darn ticket on time and you won't have a warrant out for your arrest in the state of Texas. Thank you for listening to my TED talk. Thank you for coming out. Long time no video. I'll link the video where you can see this happening in the description below. I hope you enjoyed the story of Katie getting a warrant for her arrest in Texas. She can finally go back to Texas Although at this point, I don't really think she wants to.